Hi. <laughs> We're from Gateway, Gateway College. Like, Gateway College, Esther. We're the first years doing T level health and social care. My name is Dina. My name is Mariam. My name's Sarah. We went to Coventry <laughs> Uni. It was it was actually a really fun experience. Not just fun, but it's like very beneficial. Mm. It was very different. We got to see a new insight of how college is different to university. I really enjoyed it. It was actually quite a lot of fun. And I love the fact that we got to see like the feeling of what it would be like going to uni. It's a lot less scary than what I thought it would be. Yeah, it and was. also, do you know when we actually go into the lecture, it wasn't how I expected, like a lecture hall or like a big scary place. Like scary teachers. Scary teachers. They're all welcoming. Even the teacher we were meant to have, she wasn't there, so this other teacher came and we just felt really welcomed and comfortable and I don't feel that scared anymore. Yeah, she was so lovely, honestly. Mm. Yeah, her name is Pooja, by the way. Shout out to Pooja. She was very lovely. Pooja from Coventry University. Thank you. <laughs> and it was like such a friendly environment, and it's like a calm vibe and stuff. It's very I nice. just loved it. It's mm. amazing. Mm-hmm. So, do you know what did you do? So, my session. So, I went with Spader in. Um, obviously for the session and what we were doing were clinical measurements and what that included was basically like monitoring blood pressure, your heart rate, you know how much oxygen you take in, how much you breathe in obviously and we also, Pooja also showed us like what, how to structure and write down your OBS, so your observations on a news chart. It was actually amazing, loved it. It was so fun. It actually sounds really interesting. No, I loved it because <clears throat> she also explained it in briefly because obviously the uni students had their presentation, like the yeah PowerPoint mm. sent to them before so they knew what was going on. So obviously we didn't know that much. Yeah. But she explained it briefly and it made so much more sense. Mm. Loved it. Would you say anything was challenging for you? Oh my God, definitely. We, so, we, Pooja put on a video for us about how you monitor blood pressure or when you want to check your blood pressure but manually. So nowadays we've got the new technology, new electronic things to measure your blood pressure but in case something does happen you've got to manually do it. So we had to watch a video about manual blood pressure <coughs> monitoring. It was so difficult but I loved it. So you increase the pressure and obviously it stops the blood flow to your arm. So it does feel quite tight. I mean, I did get a little bit scared. My f nails were turning blue, but that's fine. And oh then, my God. Yeah. And then we had to get a stethoscope and you had to listen out for your heart. Oh my God, that actually sounds so cool. It was so fun, but I didn't understand how you do it even after watching the video. I mean, it did give us a little insight on how you do it and a little like mm. tutorial on how to do it. But it was still difficult because I couldn't I couldn't hear the heart rate. Did oh. you manage to do it at the end? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. But we will do this in the health suite, our custom built health suite. So Oh yeah, for T level health suite. Still, yes. still in progress, but Obviously. it's amazing. It's actually you amazing. learn every day though. Yeah. So exactly. And just think about it, yeah. We're still college students and we got to experience what it's like to be an actual university so that's actually a big accomplishment it's only yeah. been what like eight weeks exactly we've, we've learned a lot my folder's full now we need to get another folder i'm excited to go into the health suite that we've got though for the clinical skills and mm. practicing how to do stuff and also those mannequins there's mannequins. Yeah. We could actually pra practice like all first aid and how it's like to, you know, like everything. We have all the equipment. Exactly. I'm excited and for the moving and handling training that we're going to get. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's on fr Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Three Fridays. Three Fridays. And then we've got to get a certificate. I'm excited we, we get for that. We actually train alongside with our teachers. That's mm. so it's new for all of us. Mm. I'm excited for that. I'm also excited for the second year because we get to do maternity. Oh yeah, mm, that's good. my favorite. I'm excited for that because I love anything to do with. Like, Gonna be the new midwife in the future. Obviously, 
future we'll Dina see. midwife. I make sure when I'm pregnant, I'll go to you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that you trust me that much. So what did you guys have to do? Um, we had to do elimination. What's that? For people who might not know. Oh. Yeah, so that's stall. In other words, people don't know what that means. Feces or poo. Um, along and with urine. It's basically all the stuff that exited, ex exits your body. Like, you know... Your bowel system. Your bowel system. Right. And <clears throat> I thought it was a good challenge. We got to do a urine analysis, so we got to use a cleaning stick, which would, which had a scale along with different indicators, and it would match with only one section. It would check for any infections and other things such as protein and glucose, which obviously you could tell if you have diabetes or not. Um, there was also a Bristol stool chart, which showed seven different stages of your stool. And we liked stage one to three was dehydration, and to, um, and to cure that, you would... You would drink a lot of water, and also dehydration suggests that you are constipated. Right. So obviously if you have any cracks in your poo, that's a bad sign. Please yeah. drink some... Please drink fluids. <laughs> Lovely advice, thank you. Six to eight medium glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. Stage four was the perfect poo. So it should just be smooth, no cracks, nothing. It should be sausage-like as well. Yeah. And then stage five to seven was... Diarrhea. And infections. Ooh. Again, encouraging fluids. Um, but if you do have diarrhea, we suggest like, um, like carbs, but dry carbs, like bread. Crackers, or, Jacob crackers. Or like toast. Biscuits, but, digestive biscuits. Mm, toast without butter. Just lots of carbohydrates. Mm. It would like, obviously, it would sort out your bowel movements and stuff. Oh, on that note, we actually don't know how to cure your bowel movements. So, so like, if you're in hospitals, right, mm. it's just say you have really bad diarrhea. And obviously it's just like liquid coming out. So the, what they do is get this um, bullet. It was like a, a mini jelly-like Bullet pill. size pill and it's like I got a point at the end. Right. So then you, you have to- lubricate it. Yeah, lubricate it so then it wouldn't hurt. And you put up the back passage of your bum. The anus. Oh yeah, the anus. And then you just hold it there for like a few seconds because- 10 seconds. 10 seconds because like they might fart and it would just come out. Right. So you have to just hold it there and then... So it stays. Because so it, it can easily slide out. Mm. And, yeah, obviously, but when you're doing that, you have to be, like, how... Be really kind to the patient because, obviously, it's, like, it's going to be embarrassing for them. Like, obviously, they... I know. And so, you obviously, you have to be, like... You have to have that... Um, I guess you maturity. Have to be mature. Yeah, yeah, mature. Dignity. You have to yeah. give, you give them dignity. You just need to respect them. Also. Because, obviously, so, how would you feel if someone was laughing at you? Exactly, that wouldn't... It happens, it happens on a daily occasion. You can't control what happens. But yeah, obviously not, but it's not nice for the service user to feel like that. Yeah. Like, they're not going to open up to you. Like, if in the future, when we do become nurses or whatever we want to go down, we have to have that level of maturity and... I don't know, I guess empathy and sympathy yeah. for the patient because it takes a lot for them, a lot of courage and bravery for them to go up to the doctor and say, yeah, I'm having troubles. But obviously, those are the qualities that you're supposed to have. After mm. all, they're human as well. So, like, just be kind. Like, and respect them, you know? So how do you think your current learning was relevant to the session? So what we've been learning, how do you think it benefited you? Oh, with Rose, um, I would just like the, before we went, she covered elimination. So obviously when we learned about it, I was so like gasped when we actually went there because I, like we could actually contribute in the lecture. Like it was actually, all, all the university students, they were calmly just sat there talking amongst themselves. And Pooja asked what the colour of your normal urine should be like. And Mariam's hand just went straight up. She was like straw yellow. And the teacher, she was really impressed and surprised that we actually learnt that in college. So thanks to Rose, we knew some things that the university students didn't. Exactly. So we have, obviously, by doing T-level health and social care, we have that um, experience. And we learnt, uh, we learnt similar things to what university students 
do as well. So she was actually quite um, impressed. I'm very grateful in the sense that we've got the teachers that we do have because the amount mm. of stuff that they do for us and the amount of learning that goes in to actually teach us these skills, thank you to them. Yeah. Thank you a lot. It definitely helps. Mm. And thank you to Amy. She's a very nice teacher, very kind. She organised this. Thank you. So, do you know, off of URI, so like, if. <laughs> no, if you're urine, yeah, it's like basically, if you don't know what urine is, it's pee. And if it's like, like dark colour, it shows it's saturated and you're dehydrated. So, you have to drink a lot of water. There also shouldn't be any floating bits because that's not healthy. It should be a straw like. If you don't know what that is, it's really light yellow, yellow. colour slash mm. clear. Mm. And also, if you're um, if you have if your if your urine is kind of smelly, that is not a good sign. You have to get it checked by a doctor. So they so they do. It's not offensive. It's fresh. It, yeah, normally you especially urine. in the morning. There's nothing to worry about if mm. your urine's obviously like an orange or like a dark color. That's normal. But throughout the day, it should be straw like. Mm. Unless there's actually something wrong. But obviously, then if you, you have... should go to your GP. Yeah. Oh my God! Did you know? Like like a long time ago, I don't know exactly when, but they would actually doctors would actually drink the patients. Yeah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. There's yeah. some people that still do it nowadays, which, like, it's a bit crazy. They mm -hmm. just drink their urine, like, on a daily basis. It's crazy. It's crazy. But obviously, you could understand, like, in the long time ago, why they would do it. Because if you had, like, a sweet taste, like, there was a sweet, that was obviously so you, you have diabetes because it's too high. But, but now you can like, imagine, like, how technology has advanced from then to drinking your urine to now where you actually can just use like a indicator to check just to check it mm. it's crazy if you think about it we're quite lucky to have access to the technology because we wouldn't be here right now doing this podcast exactly. exactly crazy crazy what advice would you give to students who are undertaking those clinical skills or like starting off in this kind of sector so like T level, yeah, in a sense. Um, just expect that you have to um, do your own, like as in. You have to do your side of the, your side of the part. Like you can't expect that like, the teachers teach you and then you get it. You have to be independent. You have to be independent. Learn on your own and go like, above, above and what the teachers are teaching you. Yeah, above and beyond. I've loved it so far. It's very fun. You should also be organised. Very yeah, organised. Organisation is key. Because like, if your work is messy, your brain will be cluttered and messy as well. So you won't be able to think straight and do your work properly because you'll be confused, like, what on earth is going on? For example, now that our timetable is quite, like, spread out in a way, so Wednesdays we're in until 12 and then Fridays we don't have to come in, so use that wisely. Exactly. You have to at least like, do your homework then and or just catch up on your work or do extra work or something. Or like just use that time to almost relax because mental health is important. Mm. I know that it's a lot to take in. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be continuous. Don't every overwork. Friday, every Friday it shouldn't be you're sleeping in or you're going out with your mates. That's fun and all, like seeing people, but that's what the weekend's for. So Friday... Yeah. You should be using the time wisely, going, reflecting on the work that you've done, preparing for any exams that you have, or even taster days. Like mm. for Gateway, we have an open day approaching. On the 12th of November. We will oh, yeah. be there. We will be there. Unfortunately, Sueda couldn't join us with the podcast, but she's going to be there as well. It's going to be so fun because we're going to have different stations where we can do different, like, in a way, experiments. I remember one of them when there was a, another open day that I came to before enrolling to this college where I was with Amy and we put this gel on our hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you'd rub that in. Mm. You'd go under the... It's like a... It's like a, a lamp, UV, isn't it? A UV lamp. A UV lamp, and that shows how much 
what is it like germs bacteria, bacteria on your hands and then you'd have to go and wash your hands thoroughly using the nhs posters that are put up on the in the toilets yeah and then wash your hands and using that you'd obviously go see back how go much, back and how see how thoroughly you washed your hands that's also important especially for us. under under your nail nails. beds there's a ton of bacteria ton. under there also you have to wash your wrists like it's yeah. cr- like do you know you, you wouldn't think oh let me wash my wrists like but there's a lot of bacteria there you should wash your wrists especially it's also those important. who wear like long sleeve tops yeah there's going to be a lot of bacteria mm. it's important though because that will help us in the clinical skills and year two of college Basically, washing your hands is important because it gets rid of all the germs, bacteria, and it prevents um, the spread of infections to other patients who, when working on wards, you're going to have vulnerable patients, so hand washing is important. If you get invited to to another clinical workshop, how would you prepare for it, knowing what you've I think just do like a little bit of research. So ours was clinical skills so just do that little bit of research and find out what it may include and like what you might yeah. have to do is is there um another clinical workshop that you hope you get to experience in the future i think because i enjoy midwifery so something to do with that or like yeah. learning how to do injections injections um, that's exciting that's, i'm excited about that yeah because then you actually inject, inject something in someone. I'm not. I don't mean that in the scary way. I don't mean that in the scary. We way. do have a model in our customized health suite, so we will have a go at that. In oh, I think have, it's the second have, year. It's the second year, yeah. Syringe. Oh my god, the mannequins that we have. So we have a trauma mannequin. Trauma mannequin. So, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. We were building it, and I was so excited for it. Like, the different models that we have exactly. as well is so exciting. Me like, the one next to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the baby. Yeah. We, me and Sarah were building the skeleton. But it was crazy because, you know, we were kind of, we have to be honest, we were kind of struggling with it. because I that, could see. It was, like, different it parts. It was really difficult. I know. It was, I wasn't it's expecting it to be that complicated. And, and like, especially the mannequin, but you get to just take it apart and look at the inside. We were struggling to place all those organs in. It's crazy how all that fits inside you. Like, can you just imagine, like, all, it's like, unbelievable. It's crazy to me, like, when a woman is pregnant, like, you're gonna have to make room to accommodate a baby. So yeah. all your organs move to the side and stuff. It's crazy, but I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm excited as well, cause for students who will enrol for T level health next year. Yeah. They're gonna do midwifery. So they've got a labour and delivery bed. They have a birthing yeah, pool. The birthing pool. That's so exciting. Uh, yeah. You've even got those babies. Oh yeah, the, the model babies. The yeah. model babies. They but make noise. It's just like a real life baby. And you like learn how to like like feed them and they support the head as well because the, the whole neck moves as well so mm. i was excited when i saw that crazy crazy and we also have a ton of mannequins like you just look after them that's like there's like there's like a diversity i'm really excited <laughs> for the second year when we get to go into the health suite and just practice and do all those different yeah. clinical skills that we will need to know for uni and then we go on to do something in the health sector and also we just got to spend most of our time in that health suite all the things that we've mentioned in this podcast is just like the tiniest bit of what our course is like there's so much more there's so much more because it's only been eight weeks yes i agree with what they just said absolutely absolutely and you never know we might actually do this podcast again maybe very soon very soon (laughs) (laughs) okay thank you for listening thank you thank you